guys, Amber here, and we are going live for our Tuesday copy coffee chat with guest expert and Tipton. So we're going to save all of the copy questions for the end, and I'll go over those with you if you have any. But first, we're going to have our wonderful guest talk with us today about moving past money issues and how to run your business on with purpose and passion and not by your money mindset issues. So Anne's here and she's a business strategist at, at Handle Your Back End and host of Creatively Rich. And she's here to talk about how you can live a life. Oops. <laughs> Okay. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. So, Anne, do you want to just go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. Yeah. I didn't even know that it was called a coffee chat, but I brought my coffee anyways. So, cheers. Um, <laughs> prepared and I didn't even know it. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, my company is called Handle Your Back End. Um, and I specialize specifically in helping women in business get their money handled. Um, I know for me, um, when I was first starting out in business on my own, that the money stuff really eluded me. Like it was really, it felt really strange and hard and difficult. And for some reason it felt very different than my personal finances did. Like I had my, my bills under control, but the money in, in the business stuff felt hard for some reason. Um, so I guess a little, a little background, a little um, story about me. My very first business, um, I started with my, whole, my best friend in the whole wide world, and um, we were going to make jewelry together. So um, we did, I don't know if you've seen them, but like little hand stamped, um, like pendants and bracelets and stuff where you can stamp words and them. So we did those. Um, and, you know, we set up craft fairs and we did, um, you know, had an online store and did some Etsy stuff and, um, you know, built out this little business. Um, and the problem with that type of business, not really a problem, but, but one of the, the challenges with that sort of business is that there's inventory to be managed, right? So in addition to like having the money coming in and going out, we also had like stockpiles of you know, <clears throat> raw materials, we had, you know, already done um, pieces, we had, um, you know, stuff that I bought wholesale so that we could sell with the stuff that we made. And so we had all this crap, right? Like just all this crap and, and all the tools and everything. And so it got really expensive really quickly. And the more expensive it got, the more I just like did the like, here's my Amex like run it through hope it goes through <laughs> game um and and it was it was terrifying and I hated every minute of it and I, you know I had this dream that my best friend and I were going to be able to be I was 20 22 ish when when we started the whole thing um and I just had this dream that my best friend and I were going to be able to be stay-at-home moms and have this jewelry thing on the side and it was going to support our and you know support our lifestyle we're going to be able to travel we're going to do everything we wanted and what ended up happening was, um, you know, I, we didn't keep track of the money. We just didn't. And um, that probably should have fallen on me. And I didn't do it because I was scared to. Um, I just knew that I, I just kept thinking, well, if we get a couple more sales, the money stuff is going to work itself out. Um, I, I really believed that like, I wanted to believe, I probably knew that that wasn't true, like deep down, but I really wanted to believe that that was going to be, you know, the, the thing that solved all the problems. And it did happen where we were making, you know, some serious money. There were months where we did a couple of thousand dollars, which, you know, for me, you know, I was probably making, I don't know, we'll say 12 bucks an hour at the time. So a couple grand was a lot of money to me. Um, but the problem is we, we were never profitable and I never knew that because I never took the time to get the money stuff squared away. So that really inspired my drive and passion to learn everything about this money stuff that I could. I was like, listen, you know, I'm smart enough to figure this out. I will not let this defeat me again. Um, we ended up having to close our business. My best friend got pregnant. Um, 
very much on purpose. Um, <laughs> they, they got pregnant, they went there. Um, and so she stepped out of the business, we closed the whole thing down. And I was heartbroken, absolutely heartbroken. So um, from there, I was like, I'm gonna figure this money stuff out. So I took a job working in finance. Um, I part of the, one of the reasons that I took the job was because I knew they would pay for my MBA. So, um, I was like free MBA. That's cool. I'll take one of those. So, um, I figured the study of, you know, working in finance, you know, hands in the dollars plus the MBA, I could really figure this money stuff out. And I did, um, like it really, I found out that part of the reason that this stuff feels so hard it's because everybody who talks about it talks about it like like they're aliens, right? Like nobody uses just like straightforward English to describe this stuff. And so when I found out that I actually have a bit of a knack for taking these complicated principles and breaking them down so that anybody can understand, that was when I really found my sweet spot with, with how I could help people because I knew how much it sucked to not have it handled in, in the first place. And I knew that I could help people understand it in a way that, you know, my five-year-old nephew can understand, which, you know, we don't need accountants speak. You know, there's this whole other language that accountants speak in. There's a whole other language that lawyers speak in. And it makes it really hard to like wrap your brain around or wrap your arms around. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's my mission is to help women really wrap their arms around this stuff so that they can use the money in their life to create a business and life that they really love. Was that too long? That was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that was a heck of a background. And, <laughs> but like, just listening to you though, I know your background and like everything you just touched on is really hitting home with so many people right now, because the things that you went through in your first business, a lot of the people watching are going to be going through that too in their first year or second year of business. You know, you go through that first year and then you look at your report of your expenses and your income and you realize how much went out. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, <laughs> wow, <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> like I was spending that much on my business, right? So, you know, if people can start on the right foot and keep up with that and know what they're putting into their business and what they're getting back out of it as you go. Like it's not so overwhelming at the, at the end of the year or when you hit that point and you'd like feel just defeated because you've realized you've put so much into it and not gotten what you thought you were going to out of it. So. Well, and that's, um, that's the beauty about if you're paying attention as you go, you can course correct. So it's not this big, like, Oh my gosh, what happened 12 months ago? It's like, ooh, you can see that dial just move a little bit and go, ooh, that's not the direction I wanted that dial to go. How do we change that? Right. And so it's not 12 months of mistakes, it's a month of mistake, and then we just fix it, right? Right, yes. So I don't think you've really talked too much yet about your passion for helping women specifically have this rich life despite or regardless of the actual number attached to their income or business but you know a wealthy life in other ways and I want to know why it's so important for you to work with women and what do you hope to achieve by sharing your insights with them yeah, absolutely. So um, the job that I had in finance is one um, where I was working for the Department of Defense. So want to talk about big numbers, big, big numbers, like so many zeros, it's ridiculous. And the thing that I found in, in kind of transitioning from that world into working with small business owners is it doesn't matter how many zeros you have if you're making 10,000 or 100,000 or a million in your business. I mean, those are just those are just zeros. And what I found is that your feeling about money doesn't doesn't change much from 10,000 to 100,000 to a million. Um, if you feel lack and scarcity, now this obviously if you're if you're not eating, this is a little different. But if you've got a roof over your head and you're eating, 
and you feel like, oh my gosh, this isn't enough. It's, I need to make more. Um, and if, if you have that real insecurity and that scarcity, um, adding, adding another zero doesn't change it. It's really a lot about the mindset and it's really a lot about how you feel in the day to day. Now, I feel very strongly that part of that is just getting it organized, right? Like, like we were talking about, Amber, it's one of those things where if, if you don't know where you're at and you're just blindly doing like I did with like the, here's my credit card, like that, that's never going to feel good. Um, that it just won't. But what I believe is that if you can get the money organized and get your mindset squared up, it's a lot easier, first of all, to make that leap from 10,000 to 100,000. And it also feels better along the path, right? So even if you don't necessarily hit your big financial goals, if you feel good as you go and have fun as you go and you feel secure as you go, then when you get to that next level, you're going to have that fear beaten because there are people who have millions or billions of dollars who still have that fear and scarcity that like they don't have enough. So if you don't nip that in the bud, you know, early on in your business, it's not going anywhere. Like you'll still have to fix the problem, whether you're doing it, you know, early on or, or later on in your business. And you, you had asked me, Amber, how, why, you know, women in business specifically is so important to me. And it's, it's because we, we do money differently than men do. Um, you know, women identify with money a little differently for us. It's a lot more emotional than it is with dudes. Like, I don't, we're just wired a little bit differently. So for me, it's really important to provide that practical, tactical knowledge of, of getting stuff organized along with the mindset stuff so that as the money grows, as the business grows, both, both sides of the equation are handled. Um, and we don't have to worry about that, um, self-sabotaging mindset stuff getting in the way of, of making our business grow. Yeah. I'm so glad that you brought up like the mindset issues and how they don't go away because a lot of people assume that once they hit that number, that everything's just going to be fine. They don't realize that the people who are making that much money are also putting out a lot, much more money too. So, you know, like you said, there's always going to be that fear of, I'm not going to be able to cover everything. I'm not going to be able to, you know, pay all my people or take care of all the things I want to take care of. So I think it's really important for people to hear that um, because it's not something that's talked about enough, I don't think. So we already know there's a lot of negative beliefs tied to money. Um, I have them myself. Most of us have them. We haven't all quite like gotten over that and <laughs> felt good about it the way that you have, although we'd love to. Um, so, because, you know, without it, life can be really tough. You know, if you don't have food, if you don't have shelter, if you don't have your medications, of course, you know, it's going to be a struggle, but you know, like you said, with it, there's a whole nother set of challenges. So having that negative outlook tied to it can be a real problem. So why do you think it's important for people to address? Press those issues head on and not ignore it. Like you said, it's, you know, if you don't nip it in the bud, it's not going to go away. So what can happen? What can happen? What's, what's the like effect of not addressing it? Yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to say, I don't have it all worked out yet. Like, don't look at me as like the guru <laughs> who has like all the money mindset figured out. I just know what to do. Um, and I think that's a really important distinction because <clears throat> money work is like an onion, right? There, there are just layers that you have to peel back. And once you get to a new level, you'll find another level of that onion that, that's going to go, that's going to peel back. And you're going to, you're going to go down the same path that you went down when you had it earlier. So it, it's only, um, it's not something you're going to fix. It's not something that's okay. I got it. I'm done. Um, you know, it's not like a college degree check. Got it. I, I'm good. Now I'm never going to have a money mindset issue again. As we grow and well, as hard, we... <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's, that's life. There are always, always challenges, always interesting, um, interesting diversions that, that we lead ourselves down. Yeah. Um, 
But I, I think that the most important thing is to when those things start to happen, when they start to come up, the better we are at at addressing them early and not letting them kind of run away with the train, if you will, um, the the more we can stop, um, we can prevent self-sabotage and, and not doing the things that we need to do in our business. So, you know, different forms of sabotage come up depending on, you know, you and your personality and what you learned growing up. There are so many layers to this stuff. But <clears throat> if you don't address the issue, if you don't identify what it is you do, you know, you're, you're just going to keep doing it to yourself. So um, <clears throat> one of my favorite self-sabotages, and Amber, I know that you can relate to this, um, is that I, <laughs> when I'm feeling really insecure about money, when I'm feeling really fearful, when I'm feeling really like, you know, ah, <laughs> when I'm feeling that way, one of my self-sabotages is to work too much. Um, there seems to be this like, well, if I just work harder, if I just work harder, if I just work harder, and, and that leads yes. to like this horrible stress and burnout. And, and not to say that you shouldn't work hard, but there, there is a point where that actually becomes self-sabotage. When you're not sleeping, you're not getting enough rest, you're not taking care of your body, you're not eating the way you should. When, you're, when you go down that train of like work, 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 um, that, can really, that can really negatively impact your, your business because your work suffers your relationships suffer, which makes your work suffer, right? Because then you get in a fight because you didn't, you know, there are all these things. Um, so, so yeah, I think that's, that's like the biggest, you know, you're, you're probably going to have one or two kind of key sabotages that you hit over and over and over again. And for me, that's, that's my worst. Um, not to say that that's anybody else's, but um, so if I can recognize that that's what I'm doing, and then stop it before I'm, you know, haven't slept in three weeks and I look like the, the Grim Reaper because I've got like horrible bags under my eyes um, yeah. and say, you know what, things aren't going the way they want to in a business. I'm going to step back for a minute and just take a beat, take a nap. Naps are wonderful. That's like one of my like most important tools I've found. <laughs> if I can just take a nap and like reset, yeah. I'm good to go. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think that's why this is so important is because I think, you know, it, it's always going to come up. It's always going to be there. And if you can recognize it before it happens, it's like, um, you know, if you've got a, if you've got an illness and you recognize, wait, I'm getting a sniffly nose, like I'm going to go take some extra vitamin C just to prevent something bad from happening. So four weeks later, I'm not like in the doctor's office dying. Um, if the more right. you can catch it early, the better off you are. So right, so, so true. I, um, like, I'm like this right now because I feel like you've crawled into my soul and pulled out <laughs> all my secrets. Because <laughs> I do identify with you. You know, um, you guys watching, Anne and I are both INTJs, and we have a lot in common. And so, my default is also to go into like hyperdrive and just work super, super hard and think that that's going to solve it. And it, you're right. It makes it so much worse. <laughs> so, so much worse. Um, okay. So when it comes to running a business, I see like a lot of startups and solopreneurs are struggling to move forward and they have issues with money and that's keeping them from growing. So they're either, not charging what they're worth, or they are not handling their back end, or they are handling tricky situations not so professionally, like late payments or something like that, because they don't have their money mindset right. So what would your advice be to entrepreneurs like that who are really feeling sh stuck because you know they don't know how to move past these kind of challenges? Well, for sure, the first thing is to get the money organized, right? Like, <clears throat> you're never going to feel good. You're never going to feel secure. You're never going to know where you are unless you have the systems in place to do that for you. Um, the really good news is that, you know, none of it's really actually that hard. And thank goodness we live in an age where software can do most of the work for us. So, you know, what, we, what used to take in business hundreds of hours um, in terms of you know, tracking the money that comes in and the money that goes out and where it all goes and getting it all in the right buckets at the right time. 
technology does almost all of that for us now. So it really is so much easier. Um, you know, I've developed a system where you can get that down to about 30 minutes a week where you can just get everything organized, everything handled, and you just don't have to do it. And that also gives you, you know, what we were talking about earlier, Amber, that ability to check in and see that dial. Is it, is it moving the direction you want to go or do we need to course correct? Because right. if you're not making those little, little changes early on, you know, they, little problems become big problems if you let them. <laughs> so if you ignore them and keep your head in the sand, um, it can really, really cause, um, yeah, it, it, you can lose a lot of money that way on accident just because you're not paying attention. Um, and that losing that money actually detracts from your ability to create the life that you want, right? Because if you're, if you're paying 297 a month for ClickFunnels, you know, for Actionetics, and then all of a sudden, you know, you, you never, a year went by and you never opened Actionetics, that's a lot of money that could have been, you know, paying for a vacation, right? Like that, that, that enough, that right. alone is enough for a really killer vacation. Um, so it's just, it's being super conscious about where the money goes, having those systems in place, and then making decisions based on what you really want. So maybe Actionetics isn't the best choice for you. Maybe that vacation to wherever is. You know, warm and sunny in the middle of February can shine a whole different light on life and how you feel about things and where your business is going and how optimistic you feel. Um, and it can really it can really make some big, big differences. So I don't know if that answered your question, but getting things organized is super important. And then getting really intentional about where you're spent, where you're spending your money from there. I love that. So I would much rather take a vacation over Actionetics any day. <laughs> so, I can't say love that anymore. Anymore. <laughs> I love I love music um, little, but it's expensive. <laughs> but yes, it is. And Actionetics just bumps it up, what, about two times more? Yeah. So yeah. Okay, so now I know you and I both love to like joke around and laugh and everything, but I want to get serious for just a second because money issues can be very serious. And so I was talking to an accountant from CYLL who used to work for the IRS a couple of weeks ago. She was like, you know, one of the biggest reasons why I got away from the IRS and want, decided to help entrepreneurs is because I was finding that a lot of the people who were like owing taxes, even just small amounts, like a thousand or $2,000 were ending up committing suicide because they were so stressed over, over the money and the guilt and the shame that they felt because of, you know, what they owed. And so I think a lot of times we don't think about how heavy the money's weighing on us. And so it gets to a point where we can't handle it anymore. And that does end up in, you know, mental illness and, um, you know, it shows up in various different kinds of ways. So before someone gets to the point where it feels like it is hopeless, what should they do? What are the signs that it's heading that way? And what should they do to to not get to that point. Absolutely, yeah. I think um, for me, <clears throat> the best analogy is, is a runaway train. Um, I think our thoughts can kind of start small and innocent and like, oh, this stinks or, oh, it doesn't feel good or, oh, whatever, or, oh, I'm just not gonna pay attention to it. <clears throat> and then what happens in the background is that train just kind of, it kind of takes off on its own. And so a little thought here, a little thought there, all of a sudden can snowball into this, like, like you said, like where it's like suicidal, I don't wanna live anymore, this is so terrible, I can't go on. And the more, the more momentum that train has, the faster that train is going in that direction, the, the harder it is to slow it down, right? If you, if you try and stop a car from going down a hill at the top of the hill, you might be able to do it, right? You Because there's not a bunch of momentum. But if there's a bunch of momentum, that car is really flowing fast, you better just get out of the way, right? Because you're not going to stop it when it's really moving. So um, like I was talking about earlier, if you can if you can catch that before the train gets too far, moving too far too fast, you're so much better off. And one of the best ways to do that, especially, you know, I know, I know how much guilt and shame there can be around 
you know, this, all, all of the money stuff, whether it's taxes or, or whatever else. But if you can get yourself organized and get yourself a plan. And so when that train starts to head too far down that road and you go, wait a minute, you can catch it early on and say, you know what? Yep. I've got some credit card debt. Yep. I owe some money to the IRS. Yep. There are some bills that are not going to get paid this month, but I know where I am. I have a plan for getting to where I want to be. You know, even if it's, you know, the IRS is fine if you pay them five bucks a month, like you can negotiate these types of things. um, So that when that train starts to go, you can stop it and say, you know what train, we're not going that direction right now because I have a plan. I have a system in place and we're going to get, this is handled. It's fine. So I I think it's really hard to, if you, if the train is moving that direction and you don't have that plan in place, it's really easy to let that train get off, like going, going real fast. But if you, if you have that structure in place to say, you know what, I'm fine. I'm fine. Let me go take a nap. Let me go (laughs) and kind of, um, step away from that situation. Give yourself permission to step away and go, I'm not playing with that train right now. That train is not helpful. It's not serving me. And I need to focus my attention somewhere else. Let's go make some sales calls (laughs) because like, let's get that money. (laughs) Um, You know, whatever, whatever that looks like for your business. Um, I think the more we can um, have those systems in place and, and stop those thoughts early on, um, the less likelihood we have to get way too far down that track of, I can't make it anymore. I can't, I can't do this. This is too hard. It's too stressful because there is nothing in business. There, there is nothing about money in business that you cannot overcome. Um, there, it's just not that complicated. It's just not that hard. And it is all, it's all figure outable. Everything is figure outable. Um, so you just have to surround yourself with the right people, the right resources and, um, and stop that train from moving too fast down the tracks. I love it. That's a good analogy. Prevention, an ounce of prevention. Yep. Right. Yep. So it ties right on back to the, the health analogy too. Like if you wait until it's too late, you're going to be in the bed or in the doctor's office, like ready to die. But if you take care of yourself and do the little things, then you're going to be okay. So Yep. I love that. It makes me feel so much better. And I'm sure it makes everyone else feel better. Just thinking about the little pieces, the systems, getting ahead of it and not letting that train gain momentum. Perfect. Um, Okay. So what are some things that people can do consistently to feel more comfortable with the word money and feel good about the way that they're living and regardless of what kind of, you know, numbers they're bringing in or whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, certainly get, get the systems in place, um, so that, so that things don't get out of hand and, and feel overwhelming. Um, because there is nothing, nothing that feels good about 12 months worth of receipts shoved into a, into a shoebox somewhere that you just like dread. Like, yeah. have you done this? Like I literally have yeah. one from back in the day where it's like, I would, just I may like, have, <laughs> not even look in the shoebox, but like put another, in yeah. like, <laughs> and walk away. Like, no, don't make me do it. Um, yeah, that sucks. It sucks so bad and it never feels good. So the more you can kind of keep on, um, on track with those little things. And again, that's one of those things that like software can save the day, right? Cause if you've got a really good bookkeeping system, yes, you can sit in the dentist's office you know, you can upload your receipts, you can categorize your transactions and like in 10 minutes you're done and that's all organized and handled. And then I swear to you come January or April or whenever you're doing your taxes, like, it's like, I got my shit handled. Yes, I do. Like there, that, like, yeah. Oh, I feel so good to just know, like, I got this, I got this. And like, I swear to you, people spend like the entire month of April, a stressed out hot mess because they have they could have spent five minutes here, five minutes here, five minutes here and gotten everything done, um, you know, in between while you're waiting to pick up a kid in the soccer line, right? Like that's, it, it could right. have been done. So yeah, I, I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> you get me talking, I get lost. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, totally. Because just knowing that I have that, like I use QuickBooks Admit, and I know that we've talked, you and I have talked before about how much I despise QuickBooks at first. Yeah. And, but just knowing that I have those systems that I can tap into every week or every day, just for a minute here and there and just go, okay, yeah, that's all handled. I'm good. It's just such a relief and not trying to sit with my little spiral notebook and go down my list every month. You know, For sure. And (laughs) the ability to upload receipts. And I just wanted to to take a quick second and just, you know, PSA for everybody, because that's one of the questions I get a lot is like, do I really need to keep my receipts? Um, And the answer is, yeah, you do. Um, Unless you have an eidetic memory and know what you spent at state, you know, what you bought at Staples three years ago, um, you need, you need a reference point. And honestly, even if you could remember, the IRS isn't going to trust your memory. So it's a really good idea to just keep those receipts um, but, you know, with the smartphone, my, my smartphone has the ability to scan my receipt. So I did this the other day. Um, <clears throat> I was traveling to New York and I was on the train and, um, and I sat there and scanned all of my receipts. Click, click, click. I matched them with my transactions on my phone and voila, my bookkeeping is done and caught up. So the, the reason it's important to keep those receipts is because um, you just, you're not going to remember what you bought. And if anybody ever wants to ask you a question about why you spent the money, where you spent the money, what you bought with it, the receipt gives you that proof. And I don't know about you, but if I'm ever audited by the IRS, which, you know, knock on wood, hopefully I'm not, um, (laughs) I would love to just be able to say, here are all of my very organized, very neat files. There you go. Go away. And that's, (laughs) that's the best case scenario, right? Because if you've got all your stuff together, there's really nothing to fear with an audit. Like you may or may not end up owing a little or, you know, getting a little back. But if you've done a really good job of keeping things organized, there's nothing to be afraid of. Absolutely nothing. I just to check in, (laughs) I'm seeing all these comments come in on the, in the group and everybody's like, yep, hitting all the right notes. Yep. That's me. Makes sense. You're calling me out. Yeah. So, and you're basically talking copy right now because you're pulling all of our secrets out of our heads and we're not liking it too much. (laughs) So, okay. Um, Do you have any resources that you recommend to people who maybe don't have their money stuff together and need to get on the right track? Absolutely. Um, obviously, my my best resource is my Facebook group. Um, I, I I really um, we have a lot of fun over there, and um, I, I'm getting ready to release some new videos that will go into that group that are going to talk about you know what does an accountant do, what does a bookkeeper do, what do I need to know about getting all this stuff um, together. But really, the purpose of the group is to um, create a place where we can talk about what it means to create our rich life. So, um, you know, that, that's the type of thing. It looks so different for different people. Um, and one of, one of kind of my, my signature things that I say is personal finance is called personal for a reason, right? Nobody's grand life plan is going to look the same as the next guys or the next gals. Like I really personally don't care to drive a fancy car. Like for me, like I've got a dog. Like, there's just no reason. Like, (laughs) I don't need to drive a BMW or a Tesla (laughs) or or anything like that. But I sure would love to spend a couple of months on the beach every year. You know, so it's it's really getting, it's about getting clear about what you want. And one of the coolest things, um, in my opinion, that we do over there is I highlight stories of people who have really gone out of their way to create a life that they love. So the goal there is to provide inspiration and, um, and just kind of get your brain going about what's possible. Um, this week's episode is going to be all about, I have a, um, a good friend who's a business owner and she basically lives her life to cruise. Like cruising is her jam. And she has figured out all these tips and tricks and systems to make cruising a part of her world. And I think she did like three or four back to back to back cruises. Um, but because oh of the gosh. lifestyle that she's created and the business that she's got, <coughs> been able to work that into her life. So I don't know that necessarily cruising is part of my ideal life, 
but it sure is great to, to sit and think about, okay, is that something that I really want? Um, so yeah. you can, you can join, um, it's a free Facebook group. It's, um, Facebook slash groups forward slash creatively rich. Um, and you can, you can find us over there. Um, I also, uh, have a great opt-in. Um, if, if you join the group, you can enter your email and get my book, um, called the champagne test. Um, and the, the, point of the book is to feel good every time you spend money. So it's, it's a framework I've developed to help you think through purchases to decide, are you making the best choice for you in the moment? Um, and, and to feel good about that purchase every time you do it. Um, very practically, you mentioned QuickBooks. Um, that is a great resource for me. Um, I, it's so important to have, you know, whether it's that one or, or another system, there are lots of them out there. Um, to, to have a good way to get that stuff organized. Uh, and then you also mentioned mint.com for personal finance. Um, if you're not using that, it is such a lifesaver. Um, it lets you keep track of, like I keep track of how much I spend on groceries every month, whether or not you know, I'm spending too much money on gas for my car. It lets me segment all those things and let me know where I am without having to like sit there and budget. Like, Dave Ramsey style with the envelopes with dollar bills. Like, ain't nobody I know got time for that. So this lets yeah. you do the same thing in a digital way, in an automated way, done for you, no worries. So those are, I those are my four resources. Creatively Rich, the Facebook group, get my free book and uh, get some QuickBooks. And QuickBooks is only like $15 a month, depending on which one you get. Um, and then mint.com is completely free. So definitely yes. get on there. I love Mint. It's like, I had no idea how great it was until we talked and I joined it a couple weeks ago, put on my bills in there. And then I even put in like a goal for a vacation. And so it shows me like my budget. And if I'm spending too much like on fast food, cause my kids are like, I want Wendy's every every day. I can look and say, well, kids, you know what? We're spending too much on Wendy's. We're not going to go on vacation this year. And they're like, oh, never mind. <laughs> so, yeah. So it really just, it really just like puts it in perspective, you know? Um, cool. So Greta well, put your link to the group in the comments. Thank you, thank Greta. You. Awesome. Um, yeah. So, so let me just take, take what you said for a minute, because I think that's a really important when we're talking yeah. about money. Um, because having, having a budget feels very restrictive, right? Like, uh, to me, I don't like, I don't like the term yeah. budget. I don't like, like to feel yeah. like, no, I don't have money for this. Right. Cause that, that, that doesn't feel good to me. But what you said is exactly how I refer to them as financial outlines. Like I've got about this much money. It's not like this hard line of, okay, well, I can't get ketchup this month because mm -hmm. we don't have that extra $2 in the budget. Um, but for me, having, having that outline, having a, a guideline to know actually really enhances my rich life because then I know I'm going to take that damn vacation. We're going to go, we're going to yeah. have a good time and okay, no Wendy's, but like I can live without Wendy's. The kids can live without Wendy's, right? Like, and everybody's happy yeah. about it because they're like, we're going on vacation, right? So that, then it doesn't feel <laughs> that you're not spending the money that you right. might like to spend. Even so though perfect. they think it's going to kill them if they miss right. Wendy's for a day. Right. <laughs> okay. So um, we talked about your resources. We talked about Creatively Rich. Um, and if anyone who's been listening to this, even though like I feel much better about my back end and my finances listening to you talk about it, like it just makes it seem less overwhelming when you talk to me about it. But if anyone watching is still feeling overwhelmed, is there a way for them to come to you and get help? Is there, do you offer coaching or anything like that? Or how can you Absolutely. help them? Yeah. Past this? <clears throat> so certainly the free resources I mentioned are, are, are a great place to get started. Um, mm -hmm. But I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. And um, generally how that's structured is I do a one-on-one -on -one VIP day. So we'll get all of your money organized. We'll get everything, um, you know, in those systems that we talked about in QuickBooks, in Mint, whatever you need. 
<clears throat> and we'll also do a deep dive analysis of what, what you really want. So I've got some exercises that I'll take you through about like, okay, do you want to drive a BMW? Do you want to go on, where do you want to go on vacation? Do you want to, like, what are those bucket list items that you're like, ah, I've got to go see the Northern Lights someday to really get those things concrete in the plan, know when they're happening and, and do exactly what you said, right? Like no Wendy's because we're going on vacation. Well, if it's, if it's no Wendy's because we're going to see the Northern Lights, that's the kind of thing that inspires really good action. Um, so we'll go through and we'll, we'll create a solid financial plan for your business for the next six months to a year in the VIP day. So you can get those things on the calendar, you know, in black and white, ready to go. <clears throat> and in addition to like helping you fulfill those dreams, the thing that is amazing to me, Amber, like, and it's one of those things that just like, it lights me up every time it happens. But when I work one-on-one -on -one with people, it's amazing when you outline those really clear goals. Um, like I had a client who was like, you know what? I want to be able to retire my husband. Like, I'm tired of him having his job. I don't want him to work anymore. That girl, after we worked together, turned the gas on her business like you wouldn't believe. She shot up and I, I you know, I worked with her before she, she did the huge shoot up and I, I don't know exactly what the numbers look like, but I have to believe she added an extra $100,000 of revenue to her business because she knew what she wanted. She had a clear plan to get there. I, you know, we worked out exactly how much a month we needed to, to make her, you know, to get her to that goal and her business just exploded as a result. So I, I mean, I personally am a huge believer that clarity can have huge repercussions in your business um, in a positive way. Cause when you know what you want, man, are you willing to, to, to climb that mountain to get there? And that's exactly, yeah. that's exactly what happens. That is awesome. That's a huge result. Like yeah. that's something to look forward to right there. Well, but when you, when you hook your, hook your line to that dream, you know, it, it feels so much more tangible. It's, it feels like something that's fun to work for and not just like this drag of like, well, I'm going to be able to pay the electric bill. Yay. Like, <laughs> no, it's like I get to go see the freaking Northern lights, man. Like that's right. Worth, that's worth fighting for. And so that's when you see these huge jumps in revenue. Yeah. Or I need to retire my husband or yeah. I need to be home for my child or right. whatever your goal is. So yep. yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much for joining me, Anne, and joining us and giving us all of this fantastic information and support and encouragement, because this can be such a heavy topic. It should so be. So it's so nice to have you come in and lighten it up for us. Happy to be here. Are, are there any questions? I didn't, I'm happy to. I didn't see any questions. Okay. Lots of, lots of you're speaking my language and you totally get me. So I'm sure that. <laughs> I'm sure that people will be reaching out to you because you've given us a lot to think about today. So I really appreciate it. Um, and if anyone wants to reach you besides your group, is there a good way to reach you? Yeah, um, certainly creativelyrich.com or handleyourbackend.com. Um, handleyourbackend.com has actually a really great resource um, that, that I think I'm going to release in a different way. Um, but it's there's a, a self-assessment tool that I've developed on the website that you can go through and it'll ask you kind of clarifying questions about how you're feeling about different areas of money in your business. Um, so I think I'm going to repurpose that before too long because um, it's, it's pretty. I might need that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can just pop over there. It's a, it's a Google form that you fill out um, and it, it'll just kind of, you know, kind of take your, uh, take your temperature about where you are about different things with money in your business. So it's a good resource too. Cool. Nice. Thanks, Anne. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Amber. I appreciate it. Yeah. Talk soon. Bye. Bye.